What's up everyone? In this video I'm going to go over scientific measurements. So on the left side of your screen here we have a picture of what's called an analytical balance and on the right side of your screen we have a picture of a triple beam balance. Now both of these devices are used to measure the same property which is mass however one of these instruments is much more sensitive and consequently is much much more expensive than the other instrument. And as you've probably already figured out, the more expensive and more sensitive instrument of the two is the analytical balance. So when it comes to scientific measurements, anytime you see a number that comes from a scientific measurement, that number is going to reflect the sensitivity of the device that was used to take that measurement. So every reported scientific measurement has three main components. The first of those three components consists of the certain digits, which is every digit except for the last digit. The last digit in a scientific measurement is estimated. The, uh, and, then, and then the final part, and perhaps the most important part of the measurement, is the uncertainty of the scale. And unless otherwise noted, the uncertainty is usually plus or minus one in the last digit. So here is an example of a scientific measurement. This is 8.34 plus or minus 0 0.01 grams. So uh, the eight and the three, those are our certain digits. Uh, that four there, the last digit, that is the estimated digit. And then the plus or minus 0 0.01 grams, that is our uncertainty. So the uncertainty is very important because it tells us uh, that the measurement could be anywhere from between 8.33 grams to 8.35 grams, but we know that it's not anything below 8.33 grams, and we know that it's definitely not above 8.35 grams. Now, in this particular case, showing the uncertainty is a little bit redundant because, as I said, unless otherwise noted, the uncertainty is usually plus or minus one in the last digit, but that's not always going to be the case. So if you see a measurement, so if you, if you were to see, uh, for instance, just 8.34 grams uh, without an uncertainty shown, that does not mean that the measurement is without an uncertainty. Every single measurement out there has an uncertainty because every single scale, every single device has its limitations. But if the uncertainty is not shown, it is understood to be plus or minus one in the last digit. So like I said, this uh, showing the uncertainty in this particular example is a little bit uh, redundant because uh, in this case the uncertainty is indeed plus or minus one of the last digit. So let's now get into how to properly read a scale and report a scientific measurement. So what we're going to do in this example is we are going to determine the length in centimeters of this blue rectangle using the centimeter ruler. So the first step is to determine the uncertainty of the scale. And uh, if you're using a digital device, such as a, an analytical balance or uh, a pH meter or something like that, this is very simple. Usually it's going to be right there on the instrument. If it's not on the instrument, uh, the uncertainty will definitely be in the equipment manual of that instrument. But if it, it, more than likely you'll be using uh, analog scales uh, or non-digital scales like rulers, uh, you know, graduated cylinders, thermometers, things where you actually have have to read the markings. And if this is the case, uh, then what you're going to do to get that uncertainty, the uncertainty is going to be plus or minus one-tenth of the distance between two sequential marks. So when I say two sequential marks, I'm talking about the distance between two of the smallest, finest markings on that scale. So let's go ahead and figure out what that is on this scale. So uh, the distance between the one and the two, that's one centimeter. And it looks like there are 10 divisions between the one and the two. So if we take that distance, that one centimeter, and we divide it by 10, then we'll get the distance between the two smallest marks. So one centimeter divided by 10, that is 0.1 centimeters. So we just figured out the distance between the two marks, and that is 0 0.1 centimeters. Uh, but the uncertainty, however, is going to be one-tenth of that. So we're going to take 0 0.1 centimeters. We're going to divide that by 10. And that's going to give us 0 0.01 centimeters. So our uncertainty then is going to be plus or minus 0 0.01 centimeters, right? Now the next step, once we've got that uncertainty, is to determine the certain digits and the relevant marks. 
So by what do I mean by certain digits? Well, uh, we certainly know uh, in this case that the three is a certain digit. We know that this is going to be three point something, and it looks like this mark is between the 3.2 centimeters and 3.3 centimeters. So those are our relevant marks, the marks that uh, lie below and above our spot of interest. So like I said, we know that this is going to be 3.2 something centimeters, right? And uh, the question then is, what is this something? So uh, that actually brings us to our next step. So our next step is to approximate the distance between the lower mark and the spot of interest. And the way that we do this is by mentally dividing the space in between the two marks. Uh, it, we, we mentally divide that space into 10 equal spaces. And we estimate the distance between the lower mark and the spot of interest in terms of tenths. So uh, the way that we do this is if it is halfway there, then we're going to use 5 tenths. If it appears to be one third of the way there, we will use 3 tenths. If it looks like it's uh, a little uh, more than a third of the way there, but not quite half of the way there, we'll use 4 tenths. Uh, if it's slightly lower than one third of the way there, then we'll use 2 tenths. If it's slightly, if it's just above the lower mark, we will use 1 tenth. Uh, if it looks like it's 2 thirds of the way there, we'll actually use 7 tenths. Uh, if it's, if it's uh, not quite two-thirds of the way there, but it's definitely a little bigger than one-half of the way there, then we'll use six-tenths. If it's slightly above two-thirds of the way there, then we'll use eight-tenths. And if it looks like it's slightly below that higher mark, we will use nine-tenths. And of course, if it is right on the mark, then we, then we will use zero-tenths. So the question is, what is the distance between the 3.2 centimeters and 3.3 centimeters of this spot of interest, what is that distance in terms of tenths? Now, your uh, viewpoint on this might differ from mine, and that's okay because again, this is you know these there's wiggle room, there's an uncertainty associated with this scale, so it's so it's okay that if to for everyone not to necessarily agree on this, but to me, it looks like it's a little hard to see because it gets blurry as you zoom in, but it looks to me like this is about two thirds of the way there. So I'm going to choose 7 tenths, right? So now that I have my number of tenths, now we're ready to move on to the final step, and that is to multiply that number of tenths that we just determined in step 3 by the uncertainty and then combine with the certain digits. So let's recap here. Our certain digits are 3 and 2, so we know again that this is 3.2 something centimeters, right? So now we're going to add to that the number of tenths, which is 7, times our uncertainty, which is 0 0.01 centimeters. So 3.2 centimeters plus 7 times 0 0.01 centimeters. So this here is going to be 0 0.7, uh, excuse me, 0 0.07 centimeters. So our final measurement then is going to be 3 point two seven plus or minus zero point zero one centimeters. Now in this particular example uh, the uncertainty happens to be plus or minus one of the of the uh, of the last digit so technically you could leave it alone and say three point two seven centimeters and you just understand that the uncertainty is what it is but in this example I wanted to make sure that we uh, that we found the uncertainty the right way, and we just you know went about it the uh, in, in in the correct fashion. So I'd like to do one more example here before we uh, before we get done, and uh, it's um, sort of similar to the last one. Only this time we're we're not looking at a length, we're looking at a volume. So this is a graduated cylinder, and it's measuring. Uh, well, the image is sort of cut off here, but I think that says mill milliliters up there. So let's just assume that this graduated cylinder is measuring milliliters. So we're trying to determine uh, the volume of this liquid in milliliters using this graduated cylinder, right? So again, the first step is to determine the scale's uncertainty. And of course, we, uh, of course we do that by taking one-tenth, plus or minus one-tenth, 
of the distance between two of the smallest marks. So let's figure out what that distance is. Well, it looks like the distance between the 20 and the 25, these two big marks, that's five milliliters. And the second uh, largest marks here, it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five of those divisions. So that means the distance between the 20 mark and the next largest mark is one milliliter. So this distance right here is one milliliter. And then the distance between these two is going to be half of what this is. So it looks like uh, the distance between the two smallest marks in this case is going to be half of a milliliter. So it's going to be 0.5 milliliters. So let me go ahead and write that down. 0.5 milliliters. And again, we want to take a tenth of that. So we're going to divide that 0.5 milliliters by 10. And that is going to give us 0 0.05 or plus or minus 0 0.05 whoops, plus or minus 0 0.05 milliliters. So what did we do here? Like I said, all we did was we found the distance between those two smallest markings and we divided it by 10 and that's how we got our uncertainty. So again, the next step is to determine the certain digits and the relevant marks, right? So it looks to me, well, let's, let's, uh, let's see which marks are above and below our reading here. So um, this reading here, by the way, that we, the way that we take this reading is we, we're, we're trying uh, to look at the bottom of this curve here. This curve is actually called a meniscus. And the way that we conventionally take volume, uh, re readings of volumes in glassware is we take them uh, using the bottom of this meniscus. So it looks to me like the bottom of this uh, curve is slightly below this mark right here. So the marks of interest, the marks that lie below and above our spot of interest are going to be 21 milliliters. So this is 20, 20.5, and 21 and the next mark up is 21.5 milliliters. So those are our, uh, our relevant marks. And so we know that this is gonna be 21 point something. So this is 21 point something uh, milliliters. And in the next step, we're gonna find out what this something is. So our next step is to approximate the distance between the lower mark and the spot of interest. And uh, like I said before, it looks like this, uh, the bottom of this curve here is just below the higher mark. So if it's just below the higher mark, I'm gonna choose nine tenths. So that means that our number of tenths in this case is nine. And that's gonna bring us to our last step, which is to, uh, to multiply that number of tenths, nine, by the uncertainty and then combine with the certain digits. So what we're gonna do then is we're gonna take that nine, well, we're gonna take the 21 milliliters, right? So we're gonna take the 21 milliliters, 21 milliliters, and we're going to add that to the nine, the number of tenths, times our uncertainty, which is 0 0.05, 0 0.05, milliliters. So 9 times 0 0.05, that's going to be 0 0.45 milliliters. So when we add that to 21 milliliters, we're going to get 21, whoops, I'm off the, uh, I'm off the page here. Um, I'll just write it below here. I'll just stick this in right below the, uh, the image here. Our final measurement then is going to be 21.45 plus or minus 0 0.05 milliliters. So again, we added the certain digits that we found just by looking at the relevant marks, which is the 21, so we know that those are certain. And then we added the number of tenths, which we got by determining the distance between the upper, excuse me, the, uh, the distance between the lower mark and the spot of interest, which we determined was nine tenths. We took that number of tenths, we multiplied it by the uncertainty, that 0 0.05 milliliters, and then we put it all together to get our final measurement, which is 21.45 plus or minus 0 
milliliters. So that is the correct way to uh, read a scale and properly report a scientific measurement. So I hope this video helped you out a little bit, and um, as always, have a good one.